Hi, my name is Dr. Emily Casanova, and I have been asked to provide a summary of our recent Neanderthal autism genetics paper. So my collaborators and I published a paper uh, this last May in the Nature Journal known as Molecular Psychiatry, and we were reporting on an association between a subset of Neanderthal DNA and autism. Now, because this article has gotten a good amount of attention from the autistic community, I thought it would be helpful to briefly discuss what exactly our findings were, since news headlines can sometimes be sensationalistic and often misleading. Now, first off, hopefully by now everyone knows that our species, Homo sapiens, intermix with our close cousins, the Neanderthals. This happened roughly about 40 to 47,000 years ago and went on for at least 2,000 years, if not longer. As a result of this prolonged intermixing, most modern humans carry a small but significant amount of Neanderthal-derived DNA around with them today. There's a blossoming field of research centered around studying the different ways that this Neanderthal DNA may be affecting our physiology and health. Now, from the neuroscience perspective, we know that the Neanderthal DNA is associated with the propensity for depression, substance abuse, chronotype, i.e. whether you're a morning or a night person, um, as well as pain sensitivity. And it may even provide a protective effect against developing some of the more severe positive symptoms of schizophrenia, like hallucinations and delusions. Some Neanderthal DNA also appears to be associated with a modestly elongated skull shape that's a little bit reminiscent of that of our cousins and Neanderthals, as well as structural differences in tracks within the brain that are associated with vision, which tend to be modestly enhanced, and social cognition, which tend to be modestly reduced. Now, these are just a few of the associations that have been discovered today, and I'm sure many more are going to come in future. Now, in our study, we initially set out to see if autistic people simply had more Neanderthal DNA than non-autistic people. And while that was our original hypothesis, it was definitely not supported by the, the data. However, on further inspection, we noted that while autistic people didn't seem to have more Neanderthal DNA in general, they did, however, have more Neanderthal DNA that was otherwise rare in non-autistic people. So basically stuff that's less common in non-autistic people seems to be popping up more often in folks on the spectrum. Now we also went on to study um, individual DNA variants known as SNPs, SNPs, and we found that certain rare as well as some common SNPs were also popping up more often in, in autism, although this varied by ethnic background. Um, in particular, we identified 25 SNPs that seemed to have some kind of positive association with autism. Now, sometimes this was also in association with other clinical characteristics like epilepsy or intellectual disability. Anyways, those were the major takeaway results of our initial study. We have plans for a whole series of studies along this theme, including using whole genome sequences to find even more Neanderthal SNPs that may be involved in autism. Um, we also plan on investigating the Denisovan genome and its potential role in autism. Denisovans, though much more poorly understood, are another of our close cousins, and people today of Asian descent, including all Asian people, but also people of Native American descent, and that also includes subsequently many Hispanic people within the Americas, they all, they all have Denisovan DNA in their genomes, and we're very curious as to whether that could be playing unique roles in autism in people with those genetic backgrounds. So anyways, I hope that gives you um, a good basic overview of our initial study. Thank you so much again for all of your questions, and I look forward to continuing to answer more.